for my guest. It's so special. <laughs> uh, we have Whitney Ramirez, and she's a financial. She she basically teaches financial literacy, and um, I think that is really great, girl, because we need that, and you know we need that in the society. Know how to, to know how to manage money. Um, could you tell us a little bit about like what you do? What do you do? Sure. So I'm a financial education coach. So basically, what that means, I, I, what that basically means is I do a lot of teaching of financial literacy from as early as financial psychology all the way up into entrepreneurship. Um, one thing that I make sure that none of my instructors do is sell any insurance. One thing I want to push us towards is being so financially stable, we don't need an insurance anymore. So you have a lot of people who are financial coaches, but their job is to sell you insurance. We're not here to sell you any of it, but independence. So. Okay, okay, that's great, that's great. So you also work with the youth, right? Yes, so we work with uh, children as early as fourth grade, all the way up to college students. And when we're working with the fourth graders, we bring in everything, credit cards, fake money, um, pay statements with their names on it. So we customize it so that way they can get like a real kind of experience. Okay, that's fun. Yeah, I like stuff like that. You do it in a fun way and they really want to get, it gets them more into it and they're in tune, you know? Right. So I think that's a good strategy that you're using with the, with the children. Keep them like, you know, focused. Okay. Yeah, very important. Right. right. And I think most people, the problem that they're having with trying to get financial literacy in schools is they don't know how to engage the children. Right. I come into the school with a stack of hundreds. Of course, they're fake bills, but, right. you know, the kids are wondering what's on the table. <laughs> right. What are we doing with the credit cards? What are we right. doing with these hundreds? And then that's right. when we can start the conversation. So you first have right. to, of course, get yeah, their, their attention. Yeah. Right. Because they're children. Right. So it's a way that you do that. And I think that's very, very good. We need yeah, that that's one of the... with today's youth because... You know, the youth, the society that we're in, you know, they they take their money, they buy nice clothes, they buy certain things, materialistic things, which, you know, really it doesn't matter. You know, what really matters is how we manage our money because you, they feel like having those things uh, makes them rich or, you know, makes them look rich or make people feel like they have money rich. But I feel like managing your money is way more important and, than those things. Yes, absolutely. And we also want, we don't want people to stop buying the things that they love to buy. We want right. you to buy what you love and then see if there's a stock that they have. And if they have a stock, how's their stock doing? Best and does that stock pay dividends? Because if it does, then you need to be investing in the same place you're purchasing. So. Right. Exactly. So like for a person who would want to invest in stocks, right? How Like, because people think, you know, when they think of, when they hear think words like that, stocks, you know, they feel like, oh my God, you know, mm -hmm. a lot of people are not educated on it. How much money, like, really, like, do you think that a person could take and just invest in stocks? Like, just, you know. Um, I would honestly say start small. So what I tell the parents, as soon as your child starts working, you want to start a Roth IRA for them as early as 14 years old. And then when they start, put in $25 and just start something small. Okay. And then once you have enough money in there to purchase a stock, just pick a stock. Let's say Apple. Apple is probably about 175 at closing today. Mm -hmm. Purchase that one stock. And then Apple's a dividend paying stock. And we all know Apple's going to be around for a while. So that's where I would tell people, start with companies that you feel like are going to be around years down. Down the road. And then as you start to learn the market and watch it grow and watch when Apple dips and goes and rises back up, eventually you'll learn, hey, this stock is stable, this one isn't, okay. this one naturally dips around the holidays, this one naturally goes up right. after the holidays. So they all have their time when they peak and when they fall as well. Right, right, right. You gotta keep your eye on it. Yeah, just gotta <laughs> keep your eye on it. But if you pick really good stocks or really good companies and you know you're in it for the long haul, over time, it always has an upward trajectory anyways. So. Right. Like you said, Apple is a good company and stuff like that. So even if you take like $100, what, you could do like as little as $100 or something, right? Um, you put, put it in a stock. Because, you know, I'm just, I just want everybody to get a good understanding. Like, you don't really need a whole bunch of money to you put don't. in a stock. So what I would encourage all of your listeners to do right now is type in Roth IRA calculator. And then put in your child's age, which is going to be, let's say, age 14. Okay. Um, and then it's going to ask you, what is the annual contribution? Put like $3,250. The max you can put in an IRA right, uh, right now is about $6,500. Mm -hmm. But the $3,250 is one twenty five 
per pay period, 26 okay. pay periods um, in a year. Mm -hmm. And then once you do that math, it comes out to 3,250. Okay. And then um, the retirement age is normally set around, I believe, 65 when the calculator is already generated. Right. Mm -hmm. And then um, the return is usually about 7% on the calculator. And if you l allow your kids to do that math at 65, you'll see about 1.4 <laughs> million in there. Really? And that's just 125 every pay period. So, and that's just something that you can just set up for your own child. That's just something you can set up for your own child. And you start them off with 14 and then just remind them to keep putting it in. Mm -hmm. That same 125 for the rest of their lives eventually will grow to that amount. Okay. Mm -hmm. Y'all hear that? <laughs> Let's say y'all better get with it. Absolutely. You can have some, uh, some millionaires. And of course, in. that's only the starting point. Because once they start making more money, tell them to start maxing it out. Right. And right. then I think a lot of entrepreneurs, what they don't know is... If you get a SEP IRA, they allow you to put $66,000 in there. Oh, okay. Their cap isn't $6,500. So as a entrepreneur, you put a lot more in because your risk is so high. That's so they want to make right. sure right. that you're able to retire. You want to put yourself in a position to retire. Right. Yeah. So it's, okay, a, it's a, lot a lot of little sense, things though. that we could all just be doing right now today with our kids that right. we just let them know. Um, yeah, that's great. It doesn't a lot of people don't have the right information. Right. It's right. just the information. And I think a big part of the reason why, like... A part of me wants to build, you know, the presence on social media, but the other part of me keeps seeing other videos where people are giving people information, but they're missing important parts. Yeah. And there's like this thing where um, people are saying, well, use your credit card to help pay down your mortgage. But if your car credit card interest is higher than your mortgage, that's a bad move. Right. <laughs> you're setting it's like you're paying up. that off and then you still got to deal with you need. Right. Right. So you're setting people up for failure. And that's one thing I don't want to do. I don't want to put a 90 second clip on like, let's say Instagram and then I'm missing important details. I feel like you need mm -hmm. more time to right. yeah. anything. That's why right. I don't really listen to everybody on Instagram, them speakers about financial and stuff, coaches like mm -hmm. that on Instagram. When I, cause you can tell it's just, they do it for the clout though. Right. right. And cool. those are the people that actually trend the most is the ones who yeah. give you like this crazy strategy. Don't mm -hmm. tell you what they, what's missing. And right. the most important thing that's missing is usually the part that's going to put you back in debt, like, not take you out of it. Exactly. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and then you be wondering, hold up, what happened? Why it didn't work for me? Yeah. Yeah. It's always like a catch. And that's why I'm more like a face to face, hands on person. I don't like, like, you know how many people come to me on the internet about trading, about all type of things. First of all, I think it's a scam, number one. So I'm really, like, if I'm going to do something and my money is involved in it, I have to be in front of a person and we have to talk and we have to really sign paperwork. I'm not just giving you my money because you say this is going to work, you know? But, you know, if, like, like you see how you breaking it down and you're saying, see, that's what I like. I like somebody I can learn from, someone I can listen to, someone who's telling you all the, you know, the ins and outs and stuff like that, you know? Because like you said, people will only tell you, especially the, most of those people want to make money. And, oh, to find out the rest of the information, just look on my website or follow. It's really like always as a, a gimmick to something. So, you know, when you could be, you know, straightforward and just lay everything on the line so people can understand they don't have to guess and, you know, that's, that's I think that's brilliant. Right. Mm. Absolutely. Yeah. So tell us a little about your background. Uh, background wise, I was a prior DC public school teacher um, in Washington DC. In Washington DC, okay, I just so, came from DC probably like a couple of days ago. So I was out there for like two days. I left New York um, when I turned thirty, and I left New York to go buy a house. And that's the only reason why I left. That's the only reason why I went to Maryland. Everybody's like, "What are you doing here? Why did you leave New York?" I said, "I just came to buy a house." Right. So the house that I purchased in Maryland, it's a six bedroom. Up here, okay. it would have cost me probably about a half a million. Yes. <laughs> so luckily, my mortgage isn't high at all because I'm in Baltimore, Maryland. And that's right. where our headquarters is also located as well. Mm -hmm. So I went down there to purchase a house. And then eventually, I started teaching in D.C. public schools. But as I was teaching, I was like, this isn't where my heart is. I want right. to teach you something that you can take with you long right. after you leave school. So that's when I started Diapers to Deposits. And then as I was starting it, um, you also allowed to do, co I'm, I'm sorry, certifications. So I started taking on the financial coaching certification, instructor certification, so that way I can have those certifications in place as well. Right. So right now that's you'll catch me small. in and out of community centers and in and out of schools as a substitute teacher. So every now and then, if the teacher doesn't leave a lesson plan behind, <laughs> I sneak in a little lesson on money right. management and we, we get into the conversation. And I think that's really, I think, yeah, there's nothing wrong with that yeah. because I think that they... So you, are y'all trying to really get that into every school, like the financial literacy? That is the ultimate goal. The ultimate goal would be to um, take our curriculum and then use the lesson plans and give it to the teacher and say, mm -hmm. hey, this is how you teach it. And if you have any questions about your own personal life, 
we'll financial we'll do financial coaching for you. So we'll yeah. teach you how to yeah. teach it, but we'll also teach you how to manage your money in the process. I feel like a lot of people complain about their jobs and most of their jobs are paying you enough. You're just not doing what you're supposed to be doing right. with money. Right. Exactly. And um, I, like I said, this is a great thing you're doing because if they can teach all of this crazy stuff in school about homosexuality to our children, and, you know, I feel like, first of all, the things that they teach in school nowadays that children don't even really use, you, you know, or it's, it's stuff that we can teach our children, you know, but I feel like you bringing the financial literacy, oh my God, I think that's really a great idea because it can change, because those are the youth and it can change the world. You know, it can change. If people start learning how to manage their money and stop giving their money, like you said, it's okay to enjoy yourself and buy what you like to buy, but I don't, people feel like that you have to, you know, wear certain things or look a certain way in order you know, it's people that don't even dress like that and have a lot of money. Of you understand? And that's what we have to teach the children, that you can have money in your pocket and you don't have to sh look like it. You don't. It's okay. Because what really matters is what you know about yourself and what you have. It's not about pressing, impressing other people. So I feel like that's really good because we do need to learn how to manage our money because there's a lot of people that gets money, mm -hmm. but it's hard for them to manage it. They'll get like, you'll be like, how you spent like a whole million dollars? How you spent that? Because you're not managing it the right <laughs> yeah. way. Mm -hmm. Right, you know? A, that's the difference that I read about the wealth and the average. Mm -hmm. the wealth, they teach their kids for money, about money mm -hmm. from age of two. Right. They start teaching the kids the value of money. Mm -hmm. See, the average yeah. don't do that. They keep, so, they keep that away even, from the kids. Even in the um, activity book um, that we just recently published back in June, it was called, it's called uh, four, four Steps to Financial Literacy. And in that book, we tell parents from as early as zero months to six months, start talking about money. So I don't know if most people know, but the more we speak to our children at the early ages of six months to two years old, the more likely we are to increase their vocabulary before they get to school. So we have to talk to them anyways in order for them to, you know, do well in public school. We also should talk about money. And you can just tell them simple things, like little things that might be going on in your life as far as money, payday. And if you just get, right. And if you just get that conversation started, it does two things. One, of course, it increases their vocabulary, but it also gets you comfortable as a parent to start having those conversations when they don't quite understand it yet before they start asking you a million and one questions. Mm -hmm. So that way, as you're talking to them, you're learning along the way as well. Right. So yeah, it's, it, 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 start, it has to start at like six months or so. Just start right. talking. Right. Just start talking. <laughs> talk about whatever you want to talk about. It, even if you just go on to um, places like Yahoo Finance, mm -hmm. um, if you go on to Yahoo Finance and look at some of the articles there, um, also like let's say Disney, if they, you know they're into Disney, you might want to find an article on Disney on Yahoo Finance. Read it to them as a bedtime story. Yeah, explain it. Just little, just little <laughs> stuff. Like that. Plant right, the seed. Right. <laughs> right. You just want to plant that seed and just get them, you know, mentally prepared and stuff like that. Right. That's very important. Yeah. Yes. So, um, do you? So you only work with kids, or you? Like you said, you work with adults also, right? Like right. adults want coaching. You also work with adults. We do work with adults. Adults are a little more stubborn than kids are. <laughs> <laughs> I'm okay. going to be very honest. Um, so why would we, you say that then? Well, there was. A, we've had times where people would call, and um, I, I remember one guy. I'll never forget him. He was out in Texas, and he says, "I have four boys. It's just me, and I'm raising them. And we live in a five bedroom apartment, but I want to buy a house." I said, well, move out of that, you know, five-bedroom apartment and downsize to a one-bedroom or two-bedroom. Mm -hmm. He says, are you crazy? How am I, how am I going to date and bring a woman here <laughs> if right. we only have two bedrooms? <laughs> and I'm like, sir, your priorities are wrong. Yeah, yeah, your priorities are so right wrong. That. And you're right about so that. So my son has literally seen me downsize us to a studio apartment in Staten Island, mm -hmm. and all the boxes were piled up in the corner, but then the glow up to go buy a house. Right. He's just like this is a sacrifice. Yeah, and that is so. I'm glad you hit that subject because that's so important. Like sometimes you do have to, mm -hmm. and that doesn't mean you're doing bad. It just means you're just trying to, you know, no, you're moving smart. Yeah, you're trying to move in the right direction. So you do. We're not, you know, we're not rich. We you do have to be able to, you know, sometimes uh, lower your expenses right. in order to gain. You know, that's the only. It's way okay. That. It's nothing wrong with that. And a lot of people, that's the problem. A lot of people don't want to do that. Even when it comes to vehicles, sometimes you gotta. Driving a Honda and so you you know then when you, you you have to then when you get your your shit back in the right order excuse my language <laughs> you know we get a little spicy up here sometimes but you know okay. but when you when you get your stuff in order then you jump back and yell your Range Rover or your your Benz right. you know it's okay but people be embarrassed to do things like that because they're worried about 
what other people would think about them, you know? And when you have your when you have your focus and you have your dream and you have your goal and your aim, you know what you're aiming for. Yeah. And that's all that matters. What advice would you give to people like who who want to purchase a home like first time homeowners or you know, person wanna some people don't like to buy like homes, some people like condos. Like just to purchase a property, what um what advice would you give them like when it's time to, you know What's the first step that you should take? Um, as far as first step I would say if I had if I had to redo my purchasing both of my homes, I would say buy multifamily first. So the first thing I would say is buy multifamily, find out how much it is, find out how much you can charge for rent per room, but also like let's say if you were doing Airbnb mm-hmm. or if you wanted to just rent out the whole apartment itself, then I would say get a multifamily. Um, if multifamily is too much work, then get a fam- then get a single family with an accessory unit. So an accessory unit is basically like an in-law suite that's attached to the home, but okay. they still consider it right. a one family. Right. So because they consider it a one family, you'll still be able to either Airbnb that portion out, or even if you wanted to start a business, you take the in-law suite part and run your business out of there so you can set it up, do your podcast, do mailings whatever you want to do out of that part of the out of, out of that part of the house. And then of course write it off in your taxes. But <laughs> and you're still just paying one property tax. Like you still just paying one. Bo- okay. Yeah. So you're only playing you're only paying one and then if you're doing it as a single family, then of course then you're just paying for that property itself. Okay, okay. So do you think like the first home well, that like you said, that that's a bit, should be something like your first home. Like we were just talking about the other day. Yeah. That should be you should rent. That should be like a, a rental property, you know, like income you rent out, it out right. to the income, and then you buy a home for yourself to live in, right? Right. And the reason why I say that is because a home can be either a liability or an uh, asset. Yeah, yeah. Right. It, it doesn't necessarily mean just because you buy a home, it's always an asset. It's not. Right. Mm-hmm. As long as you're paying a mortgage, it's a liability. Right, right. exactly. <laughs> but the moment someone else is paying the mortgage for you and you still have your mortgage money that you can put towards it, now it's an, an asset, asset because right. if they don't pay their rent, you still can cover the mortgage. But if by some chance you come up short on your own mortgage, that's a liability on your part because, yeah. of course, you have to deal with credit and all of those things. Right. So I would say make sure you position yourself that when you're going to buy a home, make it an asset. Don't make it a liability. Okay. And start off the gate that way so that way if by some chance you wanted to, let's say, quit your job, start a business or something of that sort, you now have other people paying your mortgage and you give yourself that kind of leg room, that kind of space, that freedom to kind of grow. But if you do that, but if you don't do that, and let's say you come in and your home's a liability to you, you can't just up and quit Uh your job. It's the reason why jobs get to kind of hold us hostage now, right? That's the problem that a lot of our parents did before. Exactly. They moved into their first home. I'm sorry, say that again. I said that's the problem that our parents did before. Back in the days, you know, everybody moved into their first home. Right. Everybody right. thinks, oh, let me go buy my dream home. Let me go home. buy. No, right. no, no, no. That's not how you go do it. Go buy the home that's going to make gotta you still got to build money. your way up. If you, right. If you get lucky enough, buy a home that's going to pay for the other home, too. If there's mm-hmm. a way to set it up where it'll pay for both homes for you and you get to live rent-free, that should be the goal. I tell right. you. Because it's our biggest expense as well. Mm-hmm. Exactly. Rent. And life we teach you, the Monopoly game teach you life. It, it does. Mm-hmm. It does. <laughs> that, that and what's the other game where I think, is it called life? The one where you either get to choose to go to college or you choose to be an entrepreneur. But uh, I love playing that one with my son. Which one is that? It's a game. Uh, it's <laughs> yeah, yeah, really? Yeah, but you get yeah, to choose whether you're going to go to college to and it has little babies and it has a car. Oh I'm sorry. Uh, I don't know what game that is. I mean, you can and choose. I love board games. Like, I'm a board game person. Yeah, you mm-hmm. can choose whether you're going to go off to college, have a career, or go be an entrepreneur. And then by the end of the game, you'd be surprised how much more the entrepreneur maybe has accomplished Compl- or how one that. person has accumulated more properties than the other. Right. I, think, I don't know. I think it's she... called life. I'm, if that's I, life? That's how life? That's the that's but, a different one. Yeah. Yeah, it has like little cars and it has like little little stick figures that you stick in it. Right, yeah. I didn't know. No, that. the track is whether you want to go to college or do you want to go and do and not go to college. So it was supposed to be that track as well. Mm-hmm. Okay, okay, that's cool. I gotta find out what game yeah. that is. So, mm-hmm. oh, well, speaking of games, well, let me add. Um, if you go on the app as well, like go on like your Google Play Store or inside of Apple, just type in stock market simulator or um, stock market game. And then once you do that, create an account and then it allows you to virtually invest $100,000. Oh, really? So when you're virtually playing this with kids, 
now they can get to see how much money they're making in the stock market, not making in the stock market, if they're losing, if they they're winning. They get better understanding. Mm-hmm. And sometimes right. it's even live, depending on which game you download. It also will be live. So if it's live, then it will let you trade during the trading hours. So it's actually really cool because we purchase it with our program. So that way when we go into schools, we say, hey, pick a pick a game or pick a stock. I'm sorry. Pick a stock. And then once you pick that, we're going to watch it from now until December. So we start the next right. game in September. Oh, okay. Uh, yeah. So we're starting the next game in September and we're going to watch it until December. Okay. Well, Let's see what the stock does. <laughs> that's great. I think that that's great. That's great. Yes, I definitely got to download that. <laughs> What's the name of the app? So if you just go into like Google Play Store and just hit in stock market game or stock market simulator, mm-hmm. it'll allow most of them will allow you to invest about a hundred thousand dollars virtually. Yeah. And then you just pick what stocks you want to purchase. And then after that, just watch the charts over time and just understand what's really going on in the market. Yeah. And then you'll know like, hey, this was a good move, this wasn't a good <laughs> move. You'll start right. to understand and learn it. Right. Well, and I know people who's really into that, like they really be on a computer watching, like yeah, <laughs> they eyes be glue all day. Like they just really be. I'm like, oh my god, y'all they're probably really... day traders. I'm about to say that. I, I don't know what they, they are, traders, but I they really don't know watch their stock. Like they they do some risky things yeah. in the morning, <laughs> and if they're not watching it and know when to pull out, they're gonna lose quite a yeah, bit. Yeah, I guess money. that's who it is. <laughs> it's probably day traders that's over there staring. Yeah, because you know I'm not really into stocks like that. Like I I just started something. Uh, it was like on uh, my phone. I was like playing around with it, but you know, I'm trying to get a little bit more information on it so I could learn, you know, a little more and know the right moves to make and stuff like that. So, you know, I'm glad I met you, girl. You know, because <laughs> I'll be calling you like, girl. Let me. <laughs> that's what I'm here for. I want to give everyone all of the knowledge that I have now that somebody would have given me. If you would have given this to me back when I was 15, right, I promise you, would have you been. I would have been a millionaire by 30. Right. I promise you, yeah. I would have because. The little things that I was I was told by my grandmother, mm-hmm. I was able to keep my credit score great and right. keep go, keep paying my bills on time. Mm-hmm. And on top of that, I used to work for New York City Transit Authority. So mm-hmm. I had more money than I knew what to do with at the right. age of 19. Mm-hmm. So I was the little girl on the train that everybody kept calling mm-hmm. transit on and the cops on. <laughs> it's, like, it's a little girl operating a train. And I was like, no, it's just me. Right, that's so <laughs> cool. Right. It's my job. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so I was doing that for a while. And that's even good. with all the money I was getting there, nobody said, hey, Put your money here. Put your money there. Mm, so you the right way. you have to learn over time. So right. that's another thing. Like getting once you get into your jobs, just make sure you invest in it correctly. Mm-hmm. So if I had to tell, like, let's tell you some of your listeners today, um, to check anything, go look and see where your money's going. Are you investing aggressively, or are you invested moderately? Like, or are you playing it safe? If you're in your early twenties with or early thirties with a good job and you're playing it safe. Don't do it. You need to be investing aggressively around that time. So right. That so way, when you hit at that age, 30, 35, you can already be established, right. you know? Mm-hmm. And yeah, that's very important, you know? And a lot of people, you know, I see, they, I mean, I could buy a lot of stuff, you know, expensive things and stuff like that. And sometimes I do treat myself, but I also, I, I you know, I've learned how to be financially, uh, you know, I, I've learned that, how to be... Uh, What's the word I'm looking for? Financially stable. Financial, yeah, financially stable. I have learned how to be financially stable. And at certain times, I have to talk my, myself out of buying things. And I'm okay with that, you know, because right. I don't have anything to prove to anybody. I don't have to buy this bag. I don't have to buy the shoes. I have so many bags and shoes already. And I know that if I really want to go buy it, I can. But I have other things and other priorities that, you know, I need to... Like, I love doing my podcast. I love doing my music. Like, I love a lot of other things. Like, I've invested myself a lot, you know? You have to. You know, so I'd rather invest in myself than go to go invest in that bag, that Hermes bag, <laughs> that Birkin bag, you know, because yeah. I could, I, I got to put a little tip. I'm not doing that because I could have used that money, invest in myself and triple that. You go to the supermarket. What you said? They asked for bags. They asked you, did you want uh Oh, at Dollar General. <laughs> so they were asking me if I wanted to pay five cents for a bag. And I'm like, no, I, it's all right. I'll carry this stuff out in my hand. So as far as like some of the things that I just be super mindful of, mm-hmm. is like when you go to the gas pump, am I paying with my credit card or am I paying cash? Because sometimes if you go and pay cash, they give you five cents less on gas versus versus um, having to pay with your credit card. With so, the fee, actually. Girl, yeah, when I paid right. for my... I remember I paid with my car one time. They took all this money. Over. That's the first time because I always pay with cash. I don't really use my cards at the gas station. So I ain't know that, you know, when you pay with your get, with your card, they take like a hundred dollars. When they, I, I pay like fifty dollars gas, they took off a hundred and something dollars. I went crazy at the gas. I'm like, where's my money? Like, did y'all rob me? Like, where's? <laughs> they probably put a whole. Put, probably put. 
Probably yeah, put a hold on it they put a hold, yeah. right? I didn't know that, so I'm like, I'm like, no. He talking about no. You only put. 50. I said, Mister, it's like a hundred something dollars missing from my car. <laughs> it really had. I was, I'm calling the cops. I had an argument with him, and so yeah. then I'm like, then I realized everybody told me like, you don't use your car because it takes money, but it put it back though. It put it back. It right, comes back. Course. But what if I was broke and I needed my money and y'all took my whole hundred and something dollars off and I had to okay, wait? So, but speaking of that, right? Once we get control of our finances and our financial alerts and we know what we're doing, when they tell you to use credit cards everywhere, it's mm -hmm. the truth. Use it everywhere. You're getting reward points for using right, it. That's good. But right? you also have to be in a position where every time you get paid, you're paying it off, like paying off the full balance, not keeping a balance. And you want to do that because with people who like stealing identity, and we teach identity theft too, <laughs> but with people stealing identities and, you know, taking people's credit card information, it's better that they snatch, I don't know, Chase's money. Don't snatch my money. Of course. So, right, right. so of course, I definitely encouraging, encourage using credit cards all mm -hmm. the time where you can. And then, of course, paying that off. Mm -hmm. And I think a, a big misconception as well is they tell you, oh, well, keep a balance 30% or less. Mm -hmm. It's 9%. Your, yeah. But your utilization? Your utilization. Your it's utilization. supposed to be 9% or less. Nice. Right, because my credit yeah. utilization yeah. is good. They tell you 30%. I hardly even use my card. Near 50. Yeah. No, no, no. Yeah. 9%. And if you manage to get to the point where you're so stable that you're doing 9%, you'll find that your credit score just drastically mm -hmm. increases. So if you go from 29% to 9%, you'll see your, yeah, your score just kind of... And they say um, also... Um, don't pay it off too quick. Don't pay it off too slow. Like you pay it off like like you know how you use your credit. They say don't pay it off too fast. Also. I disagree with that. They tell disagree you with it? they tell you don't pay it off too fast because then the banks don't make money. Right. Yeah, that I disagree with that. So that doesn't affect you don't think that affect, that doesn't affect the score quickly. though if you pay it off fast. Like say if I brought something cuz I did it before. Like you buy something and then you have the money like probably like 2 3 days later and you pay it off right then. And then. I, I encourage my son to do it all the that's time. Good? So yeah, my son is an authorized user. That's another thing. So mm -hmm. people authorized give their, user, yeah. give their kids a card and make them an authorized user but don't show them how to use it. Mm -hmm. I made my son an authorized user on the card. I gave him the card. He now manages the card. I never swiped that particular card. It's just his. Right. And then he pays it off. So he knows that he has to pay it off. How old is your son? The, he's 14. Oh, that's yeah, good. So he's, that's like my son. I, I finally got him a car and stuff like that. That's good. And he's so 13. Let him use it. And mm -hmm. then also tell him, okay, so this is when your cycle closes. Make mm -hmm. sure it's paid off by the time the cycle closes so that way you don't start gaining interest and then have to pay interest by the next cycle. Right. So some people, when they pay off their card and they still owe... Oh, a no. dollar or two is the interest because mm -hmm. they didn't catch it before the cycle, the cycle closed. closed. So you want to make sure that you have it completely paid off. So I'm right. totally against holding a balance. So do you yeah. think when you get when the interest when, when you gain the interest does that affect your score? No, no. As long as you pay it off. As long as you pay it off, you're fine. It doesn't affect. But you right. just want to make sure you're not it's holding for the a balance utilization. Because right. that way you're not making the bank's money and right. then you're still getting a chance to collect the points. So like right. if you use like an airline card. And you use all your, uh, you put all your bills on that card. Mm -hmm. You're accumulating all these points. Eventually, you'll get, you'll get a flight for free, right? Right. But you want to make sure that you're not paying for that flight. Because if you're mm -hmm. over here paying interest, technically, you're paying you pay for, for that flight. <laughs> <laughs> it was right. not free. So mm -hmm. it, it's, it's something that we definitely teach. And then um, we actually bought a bus this year as well. So really? Oh. When, we, when we're teaching this, the goal is to then, of course, take kids out on these financial Trip. field trips. Mm -hmm. Take them to go see the bank and sit down in the bank talk with the staff, ask them any questions after we've already learned what we learned in the classroom. Right. So we don't want to go into the branch and then, you know, of course, mm -hmm. you know, have questions then. We want to make sure we come in fully knowledgeable so that when we get there and have the opportunity to ask questions, you're talking to the experts. Exactly. Right. Yeah. And that's another thing, parents as well. When you're on the phone talking to the credit card company, put your child on the phone. Right. Sometimes I, when I call, let's say Capital One or something, I'll, I'll say, hey, my son has a question. You mind talking to him? And you'd be mm -hmm. surprised how welcoming the representatives are because they're mm -hmm. kind of excited to be yeah. talking to a 14 year old and explaining right. it to them <laughs> um, right. versus mm -hmm. having that feel like they're making they that makes they day with their job they feel like they help somebody yes. and they you know taught somebody yes something. and they're, they're yeah. very patient with the kids mm -hmm. they actually stay on the phone of course you got to give them permission to talk to the child but right. they'll stay on the phone they'll talk to them and explain the whole thing because mm -hmm. he has to talk about his credit card it's his right. card <laughs> that's nice he so to know. Important. yeah right. he has right. to know Okay, I think that's really good. You know, the we have to teach the youth, you know, financial literacy. And, you know, I see, um, oh, yeah, Diapers and Deposits. That's yes. the name of your uh, company, right? Diapers to Deposits. So Di yeah, Diapers to Deposits. Mm -hmm. So basically, it's basically talking about, like, the children, you know, teaching the children 
how to manage money at a young age. Right. And so you're able to deposit the money. And you know? encouraging parents to do everything that they're doing right now. Just tell their children what they're doing. Right. That starts the conversation. You don't right, have to right. know, you know, everything. You just have to give them what you do know and then let them grow from there. Right. Some of you parents go, so take it too. Right. So the parents can also take the classes. <laughs> so um, and inside need the it. activity book, we actually encourage the parents to write their child a letter of something that they've learned mm -hmm. um, later on in life that they wish they would have learned before. So we ask them, like, hey, what is what's something you've learned later that you wish you would have known ahead of time? And then write your child that letter and give it to them once they graduate high school. So that's that's another thing that we encourage parents to do. Just do little things. Right. The th little things them. that you're doing can be uh, teaching moments. And that's why homeschooling parents oftentimes will um, navigate from just a regular curriculum because what they're trying to do is they're just trying to give them life skills. And we want to continue to give them life skills all the time. Right, exactly. We want to teach them what we didn't know so they can have a chance to start at a young age. And I thank you so much, girl, for coming. Oh, my God, for stopping by. <laughs> Because we really needed this in our community. We yes. need to talk about the financial literacy to help our youth. You know, like That's I said, they're important. the ones coming That's up important. so they can make the world better, you know, yeah. learning how to manage money. That's really important. And, and I hope you they found, get that in school. Right. Yeah. And you found a strategy to keep them interested. And I think that's a great idea that y'all came up with. And keep up the great work, girl. Thank You're doing your you. thing. Thank you for having me. Yes. Um, <laughs> you can shout out your information so they can know where to follow you on Instagram, mm -hmm. your email, you if anybody want to get in contact with you. Okay. Um, again, the company is Diapers 2 Deposits. Um, the web page is www.diapers, the number two, and deposits.com. Um, you can also give us a call at 844-70-SAVVY. And then on Instagram, it's financial field trips with an S at the end. So financial field trips, because we're taking kids, of course, on financial field trips. And thank you again. No problem. Thank, thank you for stopping by. Okay, guys, thanks for tuning in. Make sure you subscribe and hit the like button. That's right. <laughs>